everyone. My name is Vipasha, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our webinar, Women in STEM, Navigating to Success. The core mission of this webinar is to inspire women STEM students and young STEM professionals across the globe to excel and realize their full potential. This webinar is co-hosted by FAN IIT and the Joy Thomas Foundation. The Joy Thomas Foundation was created in 2020 to honor the life and legacy of Joy Thomas, an Indian American STEM genius. As a renowned researcher at Stanford University, IBM, and across multiple Silicon Valley tech startups as a founder and entrepreneur, Joy made seminal contributions in the field of information theory, data analytics, and large scale data mining. Uh, he was passionate about enabling and encouraging young minds in STEM related disciplines. Joy was an alumnus of IIT Madras and St. Joseph's Bangalore. May I now request our team to play a short video that gives us a glimpse into the life and legacy of Joy Thomas, the inspiration behind the foundation. As his classmates at IIT Madras, we first met Joy as the 16-year-old who had come in first in the entrance exam to the IITs. That was a very big deal. But Joy had this amazing ability make you feel like it's not him, but you were the most important person in the room. Joy was then, and remains to this day, the moral core and center of our batch. I came to Stanford and took the course on information theory with him. At the end of that quarter, Tom, out of the blue, suggested that we work on a book together. It was clearly the opportunity of a lifetime, and I jumped at the chance. Those three years were the most fun, the most wonderful, the most educative years of my life. Joy did groundbreaking work while he was at IBM in the data compression area. His pioneering work in memory compression specifically the shared dictionary Zivlimple algorithm, made its way into the memory extension technology chips out of IBM. Today, memory compression is mainstream and is available in every operating system, Linux, Windows, AIX, iOS, etc. Many engineers joined Stratify simply for the opportunity to work with him and Joy took so many of them under his wing. When you think of a gentleman, you think of Joy. Um, he was so gracious in all his interactions. He treated everyone with tremendous respect and he made time for everyone, whether it was a child of an employee or the janitors who worked late hours. Joy was a gem. He was humble and he brought such warmth, compassion and wisdom to our team. And I'm forever grateful for the privilege of working with him. He was incredibly generous with his time. I wasn't able to find an apartment when I first moved to California from the East Coast and Joy and Priya invited me to stay with them and that's a very fond um, memory for me and a special time in, in my life and I, I feel lucky that I got to, to know him and, and work with him so closely and to really have him as, as a mentor. Yes, it's important to do academics but it's also important to do other things. To to, this is the time when you have a chance to explore the world and you should try and use the, make the best of that opportunity. His friends tell us that for many years as a school student, Joy would be embarrassed on the annual prize day function because he would get all the first prizes in his standard and walk out of the stage holding a tower of books every year. Thank you so much for playing the video. Now, we move to the keynote conversation of the event with Lakshmi Prathuri and Nivriti Rai. Lakshmi Prathuri is an entrepreneur, curator, and speaker, the founder of Inc., and has previously spent time in various technology and venture capital roles at Intel Global Innovation Catalyst. She was also included in Forbes' uh, list of women to watch in Asia. She is deeply curious about technology and works a lot with women and the role that they can play in changing our society. Nivriti Rai is the country head Intel India and VP GM Automotive Solutions Group, IFS at Intel Corporation, and is passionate about the technology ecosystem and how we can usher into the next revolution for India and for the world. This conversation will focus on building a culture of scientific temperament and fostering innovation and creativity in young minds. 
May I now request Lakshmi Prasadi and Nivriti Roy to take uh, Nivriti Roy to take the center stage. Over to you. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome, Nivriti. It's uh, wonderful to have a chat with you today, and uh, and really, it's an honor to celebrate Joy. Uh, Joy Thomas and uh, have this conversation. Welcome, Nibriti. Uh, thank you very much, Lakshmi. It's always a delight to talk to you. Uh, you know, you encouraged me. I remember the first conversation we had from then to now, every time, you know, I talk to you, I, I go uh, back more motivated, more inspired and ready to do more, honestly. Yeah. And so what I thought today is, you know, Nivriti and I will just have a conversation about both our careers. And uh, we it's interesting, Nivriti started at Intel 28 years ago, and I started 35, 34 years ago or something. And we had, a, and I'm from IIT Bombay, she's from University of Lucknow. We both have uh, tech backgrounds, and uh, we both joined Intel. And uh, she stuck it out and over the years done some amazing things at Intel. Uh, now, you know, two different things. Uh, there's the one is, you know, you're leading the country and the other one is uh, you have a global role of leading, being a general manager. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And I had, you know, I was at Intel for 12 years. Since then, I've been a venture capitalist and philanthropy and my own company and uh, curator, collector of people. We had very different uh, paths, but we're at the same place. We both are neighbors in Bangalore and uh, we both are now very, very dedicated to building bridges uh, uh, between India and the rest of the world. So it's wonderful how uh, you could take different paths, but uh, you could end up at the same place. So we'll cover that in this conversation. Um, so Nivriti, I thought, um, uh, uh, you know, I just have to say one thing. I was recently at an event and someone from Lucknow was there. And he was doing shairies. And then he was saying that, uh, you know, when you're in high school in most of the world, you have model UN or debating, but in Lucknow, we have love. So <laughs> I think you come with a lot of love and uh, humanity and poetry. And I know in your case, passion, lots of things other than technology, but you chose technology. So, um, and I was in IIT Bombay and uh, you're in the University of Lucknow and I, my journey was, it was accidental. I just wanted to go to Bombay and I thought it's a good, good reason to go write an entrance exam. And that's how I ended up in IIT Bombay. And I um, wanted to know a little bit about your uh, career in STEM, uh, Nivriti. How did you end up there? Is it, did you always know uh, you wanted to be there or? Just tell us a little bit about how did you choose to be in technology? Sure, Lakshmi, uh, let me start with uh, saying something that uh, my kudos to every one of you, who, you know, who have been through the, the graduation of IIT, because in my heart, I think there's no uh, institution like IIT. So kudos to all of you. Uh, very, very proud of the winners, very proud of each one of you. I must tell you that I did not get through IIT. And uh, so I feel, uh, you know, an honor to be amongst all of you. Uh, great job to all of you. You know, you, I'm sure you made your parents proud. You made your families proud. So, you know, kudos to all of you. Uh, my journey, um, you know, like Lakshmi says, I have lots of uh, likes in my life. I love to sing. I love to dance. I love to sew. I love to embroider. Uh, you know, I, I have that creative side of my mind, uh, very active. But I realized that, uh, you know, my father always wanted to be, uh, make me, uh, you know, be an engineer. Uh, I was his third daughter. So he basically took it upon himself that so what if I have daughters, my daughter can be an engineer, can be as effective. So he uh, really, you know, uh, guided me uh, to go towards STEM because he thought that's one area where, you know, some logical thinking, critical thinking comes naturally. And uh, I realized that 
through my early years of uh, STEM, you know how you start with an hypothesis, you drive experiments, you collect observation. I'm suddenly remembering, remembering, you know, my notebooks, my practicals, um, observations, and then observations-based conclusions. I honestly realized that that was so helpful. I mean, people don't think that that's so important, but actually that changed the way I look at problems, whether it is problems at home or anywhere else. So logical thinking and critical thinking comes naturally to people who are in STEM. Now, I'm not saying that people who don't do STEM don't have it, but it just encourages, uh, you know, all of this kind of thing. And I often say common sense is not that common. And uh, my STEM education actually led me to think more in terms of common sense. And lastly, what I would say is, you know, how Aristotle would say, logos, pathos, and ethos. I really think STEM kind of encouraged me with logical thinking, you know, if this, then that kind of a thing. Then, uh, you know, uh, if you think of ethos, when you know your stuff, when you can, uh, you know, solve an equation, it's not like English or history where English is, you know, left for interpretation. When you look at math, it's the proof that you see. That gives you confidence that I have done it right. So ethos comes naturally. Uh, the only thing that I feel STEM people have to really work hard on is pathos. Make sure, you know, the EQ part is also important. And I've seen when there is a confluence, the door. Uh, when there is a confluence of uh, IQ, uh, all the logical thinking, critical thinking and knowledge, comes together with EQ, success is bound to happen. So, you know, that's what I, I have learned. And uh, being a woman actually helps me a lot because a lot of nurturing and caring comes naturally to me. So the EQ part, I don't have to work very hard. But I've seen that people who are very logical in thinking can sometimes become very dry and uh, very, very, very uh, crisp. And sometimes you need a little bit softness around the crispness. So uh, for me, being a woman helps, but uh, you know that's something that I would like to say. But I've loved my okay. journey. Uh, Intel, yeah. like Lakshmi, you know, uh, yeah. is like a conglomerate of companies and I've traveled all through and uh, have enjoyed my journey. Yeah, uh, and it's, I think you rightly said, uh, Nivriti, in terms of I think we all need balance in our lives. And I think uh, the STEM education earlier years at least gives you that background, that foundation upon which you can build. It doesn't mean you have to just stay there. I mean, there are musicians, there are writers, there are uh, you know all sorts of people that come out of STEM education. So I also really feel that uh, even though it was uh, my uh, you know entry into IIT was accidental and my uh, journey was uh, um, you know much different than yours i didn't stay in uh, tech i went to many other fields i feel the the background the basis it gives is incredibly incredibly good and um, i also want to talk a little bit about uh, you know stem in the education system because you know what saddens me a lot of times is when people say that oh, you know, I'm just not good in math, you know, especially women accept that they're not good in math. There's nothing like, I don't believe there's anybody who's bad at math. It's either you're taught well or you're not taught well. It's, a, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, it's sort of solving a puzzle and it's, uh, it makes you curious uh, how to do it. And I, you know, I'm glad you talked about the notebooks, etc. You know, it's sort of, you say, uh, the whole equation that co comes from the beginning to end of where you start to where you solve is how, um, you know, it develops a certain mind. So, and Intel has done a lot of work for STEM in education, especially in India. Under your leadership, you've done lots of things in putting AI in the curriculum and stuff. So tell us a little bit about the role of STEM in education process and how it can help a mind to grow? A very, very good question. So, um, you know, like many of you, I'm a very proud Indian. And I feel that every one of us uh, who has reached uh, a certain stage in life, 
I, I feel it's a give back time uh, for me. Uh, I have learned from society people. So in my give back time, I'm, I'm really focusing hard to enable uh, education like AI to, to the children, let's say from between eighth to through 12th. And I've also looked at, you know, how do I enable college students, university students with more experimental capability and more technology capability. So we've trained about 300,000 kids eighth through 12th across India uh, in villages and in cities. Uh, why is technology important? Technology is immensely important because over the last few years during COVID, if we didn't have connectivity, if we didn't have the capability to do online education, you know, a lot of children would have suffered. Anyway, the ones who did not have access to connectivity, which is a very large number, a lot of children suffered. So I feel uh, the technology, which is absolutely essential, is connectivity. Connectivity yeah. is like, you know, roads of old time, old, old time. So I really feel that whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is, you know, um, uh, economics, connectivity is very, very key. Whether it is 2G, 3G, 5G, Wi-Fi, you name it, you know, broadband kind of capability. Mm -hmm. But I am really focused on how do I connect 600,000 villages of India uh, with broadband. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's been a very, very... Uh, interesting initiative to watch. I mean, way back when, even in 2001, uh, when I started going to India to put computers in really poor schools connected to inter, uh, internet, Intel was very active in teacher training, etc. So we partnered with Intel at that time. So Intel has been dedicated to education and educating the uh, children for a long time now. Um, you know, talking about technologies, Nivriti, um, what are the technologies you think are going to be relevant five, 10 years from now? Uh, you know, one of the things I still remember very vividly uh, us talking about, you know, way back when at Intel is that we are trained, we shouldn't train our kids for jobs that are available today. We need to train our kids for jobs that are available five to 10 years from now. Um, and recently I was talking to someone and they said we were talking about crypto and all that and we said and they said this is the first digital uh, currency for the digitally native generation you know I mean there'll be lots of ups and downs etc but this is the first time a fully digital currency for a fully digital um, uh, generation so things like this are going to be mainstream in the future with a little bit of ups and downs and uh, you remember way back when and when you started at Intel we were just getting into internet and people didn't understand what it was how it's relevant etc and now we can't live without it so lots of things are going to happen um, which are the technologies you think are going to be really uh, radically developing in the next five to ten years so our children now when they're studying what are the things they should pursue they should study so what what do you think sure so you know you uh, would have expected that i will definitely say ai because you know the world everybody talks about digitalization what does digitalization mean it means you know taking information and storing it in into digital systems so you have a lot of data when you have a lot of data what comes to your mind how do i create value out of data and just three things happen which is, you know, you have to create uh, value out of uh, data, which means a lot of processing. You have to transfer data, which means connectivity, and you have to store data, so there is storage. So you have to look at all three, uh, basically, processes that need to happen. You need to uh, be able to compute a lot of value. So a lot of computational technologies, whether it is, uh, you know, the, the uh, non uh, one human kind of uh, computers with machine learning, with brain inspired learning. So a lot of compute uh, quantum uh, will uh, come into being. Uh, if speed will be so important that you know the download or upload speed will be instant with quantum like technologies. Then storage, we're all already talking about, you know, how can we store several hundred terabytes of information? Uh, whether it is cloud, whether it is edge. So storage will involve a lot of that. Connectivity, like I said, you know, 
today we are working on 5G, tomorrow who knows, it will be you know, some new revolutionary technologies of connectivity. So all these will be important. And then data will be flowing in the air, which means you, know, you have to look at security and safety. Today we talk about you know, blockchain, but you know, it came out of Bitcoin and blockchain became a bigger technology than you know, the currency itself. But a lot of uh, you know, safety, security kind of uh, technologies. Now, I, I kind of broadly said AI, but AI is going to enable automotives. AI is going to enable health. Uh, you know, surgery is happening from Sloan Kettering in, in uh, you know, Mysuru. So a lot of those kind of things will happen when the technologies converge. There will be robotics, there'll be robotic surgery, but it can happen remotely with connectivity. Uh, so uh, a speed of connectivity, uh, security. So I really believe it. all the technologies around data is going to be really, really important. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, maybe I will let you. Uh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The other two things I feel is, uh, you know, um, climate, uh, we've seen global warming. So what do we do? And I know AI can help there as well. Uh, so those are the kind of things, Lakshmi, that come to my mind. Yeah, and also the other thing I know you're doing a lot of and everybody is doing is to make sure the AI data sets are representative because one of the things so far in the AI data sets has been that, um, you know, it's been predominantly the Western or a certain ethnic group, et cetera. So I think uh, I've seen a lot of work that you're doing uh, also in the area to make sure it's socially responsible that all the, you know, races, all the, the, the gender differences, everything is involved in the data based on which we are making uh, decisions. So I just want to say, you know, as you were saying earlier, the technology side and the social side, uh, you know, are equally important to make sure uh, that we have a responsible AI. Um, and the last thing I want to wrap up with, we have just a couple of minutes, uh, Nivriti, is how do we make sure uh, more women are in STEM and we make sure, again, representative data sets, right? So we need to have just as many women um, in fact, all sorts of diversity. So just a couple of thoughts from you on how do we make sure uh, more women are in STEM? See, I think more of us as role models need to step out. I'll tell you, uh, expectation from me was when I joined Intel, a lot of people would look at me and say, oh, she couldn't be an engineer. You know, at best should be a human resources person. Uh, so there is certain, uh, you know, assumptions that people walk in with, or, you know, if this is a woman, she cannot be strong in math. Look at the amazing IIT women we have in this panel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us have to come out with our story and our story needs to have successes and failures called out equally. You know, not everybody is going to win all the time, but don't give up with one failure. You know, I really, really love Abraham Lincoln, who said, I always failed upwards. We, a lot of us are shy that, you know, one failure uh, or one bad idea means, you know, we are not good at it. We fall into that category. So I think a lot of role modeling, a lot of corporate needs to support what the requirement for women are. You know, once the children uh, are born, don't give us boring work. You know, we are anyway leaving our child at home and coming to work. You give me the boring work. I, it's like a double whammy for me. So yeah. I think corporates have to take some responsibility. Government has to take some responsibility. Each of us who have arrived at a certain stage have some responsibility. And I all also believe it's not just men. Oftentimes, you know, people say, oh, you know, men need to change. We need to change also. Yeah. So, you know, the queen bee phenomenon, hold one woman's hand and, you know, help her move forward. Show her your failures, guide her through that. I think the onus is on all of us. We are in this world, you know, we are talking about industrial revolution 4.0. AI will enable, robotics will enable women to be working in heavy industries. Let's show them, let's be the role models. And I think the onus is on all of us. And I really see the world is changing because I see my daughter, she's living in a different world. And yeah. I believe Lakshmi, your and my daughter and everybody's, you know, young children yeah. Yeah. will not the world we are because we are fighting for them yes so i want to wrap up by saying that you know Nivriti, there are two things you said i really want to highlight one is we talked about your father i think both of us had very strong fathers who supported i mean who 
I, I had no, I didn't know that men and women were different, that we could aspire things differently. I just didn't even know that growing up. And secondly, the most important thing you said, I want to wrap up by saying is that telling our story is extremely important. You know, for the last decade, I think we have been dedicated to telling stories. It's not just to yourself, to the world, telling your story, especially as a woman is extremely important so others can see the role modeling. And finally, is to make yourself important. I think women put, it, put their hand up to save the world, to save the family, even before anybody asks. So my request to all the women is that it's okay to put yourself first and see what is your career because then the whole ecosystem falls around to support you. But if you yourself don't ask, nothing, uh, nothing comes to you. So I'm so delighted. Uh, it's always a great, uh, uh, you know, great time talking to my friend Nivriti, who I admire a lot, and uh, and everyone else who's been on this panel and who's going to be coming uh, pretty soon. And uh, real thank you to people like Joy Thomas, who have. Uh, being always fair and equal and diverse and giving voices to everybody, et cetera. So let's all go into a world where uh, there is equality and diversity and technology definitely will bring us all together. Thank you very much for all your time. Lakshmi, let me just share one thing with you. Sure. Yeah. Hanuman Jayanti and, you know, a phrase comes to my mind, which is true for everyone. Uh -huh. uh, one of the phrases in uh, Hanuman Chalisa is Apan tej samharu ape, tino log hakte kape. You have the energy to shake the three worlds. All you have to do is just go access. So, yes. you know, strengths to all of us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Nivruti. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi, and for that beautiful conversation. See from the audience comments saying that they had similar feelings uh, when they were working in a Japanese pharma company. There were questions of how a woman could be a senior director with 15, 20 people, postdocs, both men and women, reporting to her. Thankfully, this question did not come up earlier when she was at an Indian company. And I really hope that we can change the narrative of women in STEM. Uh, moving on, uh, in our next panel, we have Anant Agarwal and Chitra Nayak taking the stage where we talk about the future of education and lifelong learning. Anant Agarwal is the Chief Open Education Officer at 2INC. Guiding and furthering the company's mission to increase access to high quality education for everyone, everywhere. He joined U2 through the edX acquisition, where he directed its, its evolution into one of the world's leading online platforms as, as its founder and CEO. As the first educator to teach an edX course on circuits and electronics from MIT, Anand drew 155,000 students from 162 countries. He remains a professor of electrical engineering and computer science at MIT today. Previously, he served as the director of CSAIL, MIT's computer science and AI laboratory. Chitra Nayak is a board member at Infosys in which a forward air and life works. She advises startups on go to market. She was the CEO COO platform at Salesforce. She's also the co-founder of nightly.org, supporting the advancement of South Asian professional women. She has an MBA from the Harvard Business School, an MS from Cornell University, and a BTEC from IIT Madras. May I please request Chitra and Anand to take over the stage? Well, hi, Anand. It's great to see you after something like 40 years. My goodness, it has been, uh, it has been 40 years, Chitra. I've been, uh, for the past few decades, I've uh, I'd heard, uh, uh, you know, incredible stories about uh, all the amazing things you were doing, but never had a chance to meet you. And so uh, just seeing you virtually uh, 40 years later is just, uh, just such, a, such a pleasure. Yes, well, I can absolutely say the same about you. Uh, and I'm excited to have a chance to have this conversation. So let's just dive in. Um, would love to hear a little bit about edX uh, and its role in the future of learning. I know it's been years since you started this, so tell us. 
Uh, first of all, uh, let me start by saying what an incredible honor it is for me uh, to be invited to join this uh, panel among uh, such incredible people who've accomplished um, uh, so much. So thank you for uh, uh, the bottom of my heart uh, for having me. Uh, to your question, Chitra, um, edX is a learning platform uh, founded by Harvard and MIT about 10 years ago. Um, as a platform company, edX connected learners all over the world to some of the top education from top institutions like uh, MIT, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, uh, IIT Bombay, IM Bangalore, and also companies like uh, Google, IBM, and others. And today, this platform connects over 43 million learners from every single country in the world to uh, some of the great teachings of uh, these universities and uh, companies. From India alone, we have uh, uh, about 6 million learners uh, from all over India uh, learning, uh, learning on the platform. And edX is about online learning, enabling anyone anywhere to access our courses over 3,500 courses and uh, all of them available, most of them available completely for free. So with one mouse click, no matter where you are in the world, if you have an internet connection and the will to learn, you could go in and start learning for free. That's so let me- uh, Phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Chitra. So let me, uh, let me flip, uh, flip it around here and uh, you know, ask you a question. So uh, you re recently uh, co-founded uh, Netri. Uh, to help advance the careers of professional women. You know, tell us how your own experiences in your own career uh, you know, made you realize that uh, there is this important need in our society. So, uh, you know, going back to when I was at IIT and I had three women in my class and 250 guys, um, it's been a thread through all of my career. Uh, so then I went into a master's in environmental engineering, which again ended up in a field with mostly men. Um, and then I thought, okay, let's go to business school, went to Harvard and ended up at the Boston Consulting Group. But even there, interestingly, I remember a woman partner saying she was at this great meeting with the client and a bunch of other BCG people. Um, and the conversation was amazing uh, till the point where they took a break and the conversation kept going all the way into the men's room. And so, you know, if you look at this thread, then you come to Salesforce, which was a leader, uh, had wonderful, passionate people, a leader in the cloud uh, SaaS world, uh, wonderful, passionate people, but mostly male um, and uh, a lot of fairly strong egos. Uh, and I found I had a lot of women coming to me saying, how do I make myself heard in this assertive, aggressive sort of environment? And so that thread continued. Uh, I actually co-founded the Salesforce Women's Network around 11 or 12 years ago, uh, to the point of Netri, where I actually had a lot of South Asian women coming to me even at Salesforce saying, um, is there something that is similar but different for South Asian women? And we found that while a lot of the needs are similar, there's that connectedness of having the same context and being able to get advice and mentoring from people like you uh, that actually we made a difference, and that's where Netri started. You know, Chitra, you talked about uh, uh, you know several women colleagues, you know, coming in asking for advice. So, you know, specifically, could you could you say a bit about what kind of advice are women in mid to senior career positions seeking? You know, is there a pattern to the kind of advice they're seeking? You know, it's interesting because I've found that women across the spectrum of their careers are looking for advice and often uh, similar, but sometimes different advice. So it might be as general as I'm dealing with imposter syndrome. You know, how do I feel like I'm right for this role? Um, and, you know, I tell people that I've come to this conclusion that as long as you have a quest for learning, uh, the imposter syndrome will likely always be your lifetime companion. Uh, but I think everything from imposter syndrome to more specific uh, kinds of mentoring and advice where, for instance, a 28 year old woman a few months ago was asking me for help in negotiating her offer from LinkedIn and she actually got an email from the head of recruiting saying, women don't do this enough we've given you everything we can and it's so great that you negotiated this way. Then there are women who are midway through their career thinking about, you know, they're in their 40s, uh, they want to make a, a change in a certain aspect of leadership. 
Uh, and so that's a different conversation. And then even more uh, further in their careers, if they're thinking about board roles, they might come in to talk about that. So I, I think it takes uh, different forms. There are some commonalities that you will see uh, across all of it. Uh, women tend not to ask very much, uh, as Lakshmi mentioned. Uh, so those are all, uh, I think, different elements um, of uh, th this idea of what you can get from mentorship. The one thing I do want to add is, um, you know, a lot of people when they think about mentorship don't realize the two things. One, that a mentor needn't be the same person, right? Um, you could have somebody that um, helps you with one dimension and then you have somebody else that helps you. And it's, uh, it's, I heard somebody call it mentor snacking, which I thought was a great term. The second thing I will say about mentorship is remember it's a two-way street. You may be a mentee, there are things you can offer back to your mentor. And so it's, it's really important to do that as well. No, fantastic, Chitra. You know, I loved your um, mentor snacking. It immediately came to my mind, you know, mentor buffet. Can you imagine if all of us had a buffet of mentors we could rely on? And frankly, you know, all of us have relied on mentors throughout our lives for myself. You know, I had mentors in, uh, in uh, growing up, uh, uh, you know, like Nivruti. I too have a Mangalore and Lucknow connection, born in Lucknow, <laughs> spent my life in Mangalore. And in Mangalore, um, my physics teacher, and math teachers were huge mentors for me. At IIT, of course, all the seniors were incredible mentors. And then, uh, you know, as we start companies and so on, we look to other founders, uh, you know, as mentors. And and uh, Nivruti Rai mentioned how mentioned how women should hold out their hands and you know, hold the hands of others and lead them along the way. I think successful, you know, uh, folks like Nivruti and yourself, Chitra, totally realize that how important it is for us to stand on the shoulders of others. And so, you know, uh, the importance of a mentor network simply cannot be, uh, cannot be overstated. And the work you're doing with Netri is just absolutely fantastic, Chitra. Uh, thank you, Anand. Um, so as you think about um, the mentorship, clearly that is important, but equally, how do you think that online learning platforms, which are clearly very critical in self-education, um, like edX uh, can help people advance in their careers or to make a career change and specifically also um, how do we how do you think it can increase the participation of uh, younger women in STEM you know so there's two categories here certainly for um, you know platforms like edX can help people um, advance careers make career changes uh, you know today we are in a world of lifelong learning we have to be lifelong learners Technology is coming at us, uh, you know, from uh, 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G, it goes on and on, you know, uh, robotics, AI, blockchain, there's newer and newer stuff coming at you. And, and every day goes, that goes by, I just realize I know less and less relative to the scope of knowledge that's out there. So we have to become lifelong learners. And so imagine if you're 35, you know, you have a couple of kids, you have a job, you know, what are the, <laughs> what are the odds that you're going to be able to you know, go back to an IIT or go back to a college and spend one or two or three years getting re-educated. You know, the odds are zero, absolutely zero. And so the question is, how do you be lifelong learners? And frankly, to me, the only approach is, uh, is uh, online learning where you know, I can take some uh, time off from work uh, or in the evenings and, and learn online in this continuous lifelong manner. And at edX, we've tried to launch some new credentials. You know, degrees are too big. So we launched new credentials called uh, micro-credentials. You know, Intel went from uh, uh, computers to microcomputers and microprocessors. So we went from master's degrees and bachelor's degrees to new credentials called, you guessed it, micro masters and micro bachelors. So you could, if you have a bachelor's degree or not, you can complete a micro masters in the space of about uh, uh, three to six months in topics like, uh, you know, data science or AI or machine learning or blockchain and Bitcoin and and uh, you know IoT, well, all of these cool things that are coming out there, and uh, and on edX you can start, you can get in and and uh, learn for free. It just takes uh, takes a click. Once you have these credentials, eighty nine percent of the learners who've earned a micro masters are telling us that within three months they saw a career advancement, a new job, a promotion, or a pay raise. So I mean, this this is this is data driven. To your second part, Chitra. How do we increase the participation of young girls in STEM? Um, you know, there are a variety of reasons, but 
young girls, you know, certainly are highly motivated. You know, I have a, a 22 year old daughter who's in STEM and clearly in a family where both um, mom and dad were in STEM, you know, they, they saw enough of STEM happening that they had role models to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to follow. But a lot of times, girls in college and school, uh, uh, you know, as I've talked to them, said, ah, they try to ask questions. You know, the boys tend to be more aggressive. The teachers tend to, uh, you know, move them in more of the, you know, the non-STEM fields. I think online learning, frankly, creates a safe space where women in STEM, no matter how young you are, can come in and learn. And uh, you can learn without people judging you or people making, you know, uh, society having sort of preconceived uh, notions. And in fact, we work with uh, uh, one of the extreme cases are in the Middle East where, you know, Jordan has adopted a platform across the country. And one big reason uh, we work with Queen Rania of the Queen Rania Foundation, who has similar motivations to to upskill and get women into uh, uh, STEM and careers. Um, and online learning was a big approach where oftentimes women had difficulty going to college and so on. Uh, but online, uh, many women are uh, taking to social networks, they're taking to online learning. And so there's a really good chance to get more participation from young girls in STEM through uh, online learning where they can follow their heart and their passion and they don't necessarily have to listen to uh, other folks telling them what they can or cannot do. So I love the sound of the micro masters. Um, and, you know, honestly, I hadn't thought about the uh, leveling of the playing field that you get from online learning. So, you know, I, I resonate to a lot of the other things you said, which is, uh, especially if it's for free, it's a great way for people to come in and learn different skills. But those particular aspects actually seem extremely relevant uh, to this population of women. And the more you hear about careers now are not career ladders, but career jungle gyms, uh, if one can use online learning to support one's movement laterally uh, and broaden what one can offer, it's, it's just a very phenomenal offering. You know, Chitra, <laughs> today you're a fount of these incredible uh, you know, sayings. You know, learning is a jungle gym. So we have already learned two things from you. Uh, uh, you know, mentor buffets, and not learning ladders, but learning learning jungle gym. So uh, that's you know absolutely amazing. So you know I think uh, uh, also the courses on edX um, are free. So even if you don't have the means to pay for it, you can come in and uh, learn for free and advance your career in that manner. So let me turn it around again, Chitra, and uh, you know not just through your aphorisms, but also you know as we've been chatting, uh, I'm sort of getting the sense that both online learning and mentoring are really two sides of the same coin, the very complementary ways for people to ad 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 you know, advance along their chosen career path or maybe advance, uh, you know, advance in the jungle gyms. And so uh, whether to make a career change or whether to uh, you know, find uh, advance in their careers and so on. So what do you think? You know, do you think online learning and mentoring are, are sort of uh, you know, go hand in hand? You know, absolutely. You know, I can think of so many examples. So, for instance, uh, my my mother's attendant uh, is this amazing, very smart woman who never had a chance to go to college. She's putting her daughters through college, um, and she has a daughter who's doing her BTech in computer science, uh, who's now 21 uh, in her third year, and she asked if I would advise her. Uh, so I had a great conversation with her, and that was the mentoring part. We talked about possibilities in her field, but also, uh, you know, similar to edX, uh, Infosys, where I'm on the board, has an amazing springboard program, which is all about digital learning and digital reskilling. And so I directed her to some of their content uh, and also an opportunity after she's in her fourth year to potentially go out uh, with those skills that she can gain using their online learning platform potentially to get a job there. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, that example hopefully is a perfect one. Another one that I bring up quite often actually is we have at Netri a board readiness program where we take people who are thinking about joining a board through the elements of what does that mean. One of the things that uh, I tell a lot of the women I advise is that, in fact, a lot of people who haven't done finance uh, at any depth 
will find themselves in trouble in a board because you really need to be able to understand financials to be properly accountable. And that's another example where, you know, I can advise people on what it means to be on a board. But at the end of the day, you have to be ready also to go help yourself uh, to learn so you can get ahead. So I think really that those two things absolutely go hand in hand. Um, so, you know, I, I think this whole idea of uh, careers continue to be more fluid, which is a wonderful thing for opportunities. And so the ability to, to get the learning, get the advice so you can move yourself along in your career to get new and complementary skills uh, and to position yourself for the next thing, those are just uh, invaluable. And couldn't agree, so, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, Chitra, where, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, students at, uh, whether it's at MIT, where I've been teaching for, you know, 32 years, or, you know, um, young folks looking to create new startups, you know, the one piece of advice I give them, whenever they say, what is the one thing you can tell me, I would tell them, find a mentor. And what's amazing is that, you know, uh, for most, most people, who've uh, done companies, who've taught and so on, they're all looking to help. And many of them are actually shy. So they won't go and thrust the help upon you. So all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask and suddenly, you know, they won't stop talking. And so, uh, so uh, you know, finding a mentor is such a key area. And I think the network you're putting together, at Chitra, will be such a, such a wonderful service. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I think that whole thing about just go and ask I think that's one of the biggest things that women need to learn to do, which is uh, ask and do not be afraid if someone says no, because everyone won't say yes, but do not be afraid to ask would be my parting comment. So uh, with that, Anant, I've really enjoyed this conversation and I think our time is up, but uh, I learned a lot. Uh, this was a great chat. And so I'm going to hand this back over to Vipasha so she can move to the next uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Chitra. Thank you. Thank you so much for this conversation, Anand and Chitra. Uh, I think I've just found mentors without even asking for, uh, you know, asking for one. Uh, sometimes it's these conversations, it's these one-liners. And, uh, you know, Chitra, one thing that I learned from you is that if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Uh, so thank you for that parting thought and uh, we move on to our next segment now. Uh, did you know that over the last two decades, while women have been more likely to receive an undergrad degree than their male counterparts, women earned STEM degrees at half the rate of men. This fact caught the attention of the United Nations and they proclaimed February 11th of each year as International Day of Women and Girls in STEM. And, you know, it's, it's not about tokenism or recognizing the particular day, uh, but just the fact that there, there is a moment for us to celebrate really means a lot. Uh, the next panel discussion is a pre-recorded panel featuring three inspiring women in their STEM careers who are at various stages of their journeys. Uh, may I request the team to play the video? Welcome to our panel discussion on STEM journeys. We have three guests at various stages in their individual STEM journeys, and we hope to learn from them about their inspirations and challenges that they encounter in the course of their progress. Our panelists are Anjana Susarla, Pooja Goyal, and MS Archana. Anjana Susarla is, a, is the professor of responsible AI at Ellie Broad College of Business at Michigan State University in USA. She has an undergrad degree from mechanical engineering from IIT Madras, an MBA from IAM Calcutta, and a PhD in information systems from the University of Texas at Austin. She studies algorithmic bias and responsible AI. Pooja Goel is the co-founder and CEO of Avishkar, which is a platform to support children learn next gen tech skills like robotics, AI, IoT, coding. Prior to Avishkar, Pooja worked at Adobe in USA for many, many years, where she managed the Acrobat product marketing team. She graduated from IIT Delhi and later did her MBA from INSEAD in France. Pooja recently received the Women Transforming India Award by the Government of India. She invests in women-led companies and supports women founders through She EO Club, an organization she founded a few years ago. MS Archana is just beginning her career in STEM as a software engineer for Microsoft in Bangalore. She graduated from IIT Kanpur with a BTEC major in electrical engineering and minors in machine learning and computer systems. 
She is an alumna of Jawahar Navodhya Vidyalaya and Dakshina Scholar. She received the Ashok Jain Award for being the female topper from Dakshina. Welcome everybody to the panel. Really, really great having you here. Happy to be here, Vipasha. Thank you so much. Yeah. Glad you to be here. Dive into, you know, first understanding what your personal journeys are. Where did you come from? What's the context? And uh, what have been some aha moments that have led you to where you are today? Uh, so we go one by one and we put the spotlight on Anjana um, as per roll call. And uh, over to you. So I'm delighted to share a little bit of my journey. So my journey, as it happens, um, I grew up in a town called Kakinada, which was um, at that time in, in the state of Andhra Pradesh. There were not many people from Kakinada who went to IIT. I remember maybe three or four people in my entire childhood, one of whom was my own uncle. And so uh, it was, to say the least, very unusual. And what happened was sometime in my high school, my parents decided to buy a house in a, a rural part outside Kakinada. And then suddenly life as it turned out, we had a lot of financial hardship. And I think it was the combination of, you know, suddenly I was starting my uh, 11th class. I was switching from, at that time, I studied in ICSE syllabus in a convent school till 10th class. And suddenly I was going to the state boards and math was just very different. I hated math till 10th class. It was, it seemed like you're just doing a lot of cumbersome calculations. And suddenly, here I am, young person, dealing with a lot of unexpected challenges thrown by life. And uh, the town of Valsapakla was not even connected through any proper bus routes to the city of uh, Kakinada. A and I had to find myself... My family could not afford in those days, people had what were called those mopeds. It cost like five or 6,000 rupees. It was, we could not afford that money and could not afford the cost of the petrol for me to commute between. So I used to take, I used to cycle uh, about like, at least it would be half an hour one way. And sometimes I leave my bicycle in some friend's house and then walk like another 20 minutes or 30 minutes to a tuition center where I would be trying to um, learn math for uh, the state, uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, state engineering entrance exams. Mm -hmm. And so I think somehow it was this combination of some personal circumstances and the change in, in the schooling system and something about, I found myself suddenly in this, people were all competing to solve these problems. It was the state board exams are all about test of speed. But something about that made math also more fun. And I think I just enjoyed the, the peer interaction, that competition. And suddenly there's that aha moment where you're trying to solve something. And then suddenly, poof, you know, the proof appears. And you have that, it may be a very minor or very fleeting sense of accomplishment. But you feel like, okay, I figured it out. And I think that was my personal thing. And that was suddenly what made me realize that I was, I enjoyed doing math. And it's at the, it was at the end of my first, uh, you know, 11th standard that I said, okay, I'll study for IIT. This probably most of my peers were already preparing for GE from ninth class or something like that. But, you know, fortunately things worked out for me. And uh, I got into IIT and so on. And uh, yeah, that was, that was what launched, I think the whole, my, my whole life changed because of those circumstances. And from IIT to where you are today, what, what have been some milestones in your journey? Well, um, milestones in my journey after IIT, I went to IIM Calcutta. Because at that time, economic liberalization uh, just began in India when we were in IITs. So it looked, it seemed like suddenly it was very attractive, the world of commerce and business. And I think no doubt Pooja might say some of the same things. We went to a you know, business school thinking we'll be part of these exciting changes. And then I discovered IT consulting. The world of IT consulting was what led me to decide to do a PhD. And I came to the US. 
mm -hmm. um, to do, uh, you know. And so when I came to the US, it was the dot-com boom at that time. A lot of people thought I was crazy to go into academia instead of, you know, going for riches in Silicon Valley. But I think it was that exciting. I was in a lot of right places at the right time. And, you know, in hindsight, well, maybe I didn't become dot-com gazillionaire or whatever, but I was, I really enjoyed very early generation. I was working on cloud computing pricing models in my dissertation. And, you know, in my undergraduate, I, I didn't think of myself as a particularly great student by any means, but I was doing my, my um, BTEC project on computer vision which 20 years later is like 15 years later is deep learning. A lot of deep learning comes from computer vision. So it's almost like a third or fourth career I started doing AI and responsible AI. So I think these were all milestones in my life. And I've been very fortunate to have wonderful colleagues, mentors, so many people who've been part of my journey. Anju, you are grooming future billionaires. <laughs> I, I should hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope and maybe, AI. yeah I hope so <laughs> and and Pooja is doing her part by encouraging entrepreneurship among the very young people so that's that's a phenomenal thing as well amazing so let's put the spotlight on Pooja Pooja what's your story like what's been your journey what are your aha moments would love to get to know you better sure with Pasha um, so, you know, now when I introduce myself, I'll say, okay, I'm the co-founder of Avishkar and I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my third startup. But when in reality you look back, it's like a case study in Brownian motion. Uh, just so many serendipitous moments. And I feel like I've done a PhD in failing because with, you know, when you are running, when you run three startups, pretty much a lot of the journeys about, oh, you're not getting this right, oh, you're not getting this right. And there might be that one moment that clicks it uh, for you or changes the trajectory. And uh, so, so that's happened to me now. You know, this is my, my third startup. Um, uh, but just going back to the early part of my journey, I came from Jaipur and nobody in my family, I'm, I'm the youngest of four sisters, nobody in my family had... Um, even completed college or uh, uh, let alone a professional degree. But I, uh, you know, my sisters are very supportive. So I was always kind of the topper kind in the class, never like the top one, but top five, top six. Um, and pretty much the world was Jaipur. Um, when you ask that question of the aha moment is trying to think it for me, it was uh, this camp, which was called the NTSC camp. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in an all-girls school called Sophia, uh, and by so there was no math in 11th and 12th. They just didn't offer it because most girls didn't take it. Most girls didn't go into engineering. If you're very good in studies, you'd go med do medicine and become a doctor. Otherwise, you'd go liberal arts, and there was this college called Maharani College there. Uh, so in 10th grade, uh, uh, I, um, pa I participated in something called NTSC scholarship, which is a government scheme where lifelong you get uh, institution from the from the government mm -hmm. and it is a three-step process uh, once I cleared the first step the Rajasthan government used to have a camp where they used to pay us to go and attend the camp for like about a month and that was like big money um, but more importantly what happened there is that they were for the first time I was interacting with boys of my age and I was asking them, so what are you thinking of doing next? And pretty much like 80% of them, they all said um, IIT. And I hadn't even heard of IIT at that time. I went back home, talked to my brother and I said, what is IIT? I said, oh, that, that's, that's a really good school and, uh, but you will need maths for it. Uh, and we didn't have math in our school. Uh, so I, so, you know, my brother-in-law said, if you really want, I can support you. And he was not a teacher or, you know, he just kind of said, if you want to take it, try it and, and, um, and, and I'll support you. And I went and asked my school, they said, look, we don't have a teacher, but you can do it on your own and we'll make sure you can appear for the exam. 
uh, in in the 12th grade and uh, so uh, so that was kind of the surrender pitis and i studied my brother in law health and um, and and got through iit and that was again one of those kind of moments um but it was like okay your rank is 484 you get pigeon hold into chemical engineering delhi and that's how it was and i had no clue what i was getting in uh, what 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 i should expect um the first year i loved all the courses because they were all math science but chemical engineering i was like it's not my thing i don't want to do my research in it um and um and i mean we we'll talk about it a little bit but first year when i reached there i found everyone so smart i thought everyone is better than me i was convinced the jee de department had made a mistake or given me somebody else's rank for a very long time uh, so i spent most of my time in iit playing basketball and doing drums and singing um and uh, yeah now i'm familiar with that term imposter syndrome but at that time it was like that's it and so um yeah i'm coming out of iit then i knew i had to explore other things so moved more into strategy consulting um with with a company called feedback ventures um then moved to the bay area where i started my first company in um, enterprise software space called eliance uh, that went under uh, in the downturn of 2001 so that was the kind of first first big failure but you know pretty much i learned a lot about running a company starting a company through that experience then decided to go back to insiad and at that time i was feeling like oh my god my resume what does it look like it was really brown in motion from here to there and um, and then um, uh, after insiad i tried to put some structure to it joined at palm first and then adobe Moved back to India, started another company, and now I'm on my third. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Pooja. Lots of questions, but uh, let's first have Archana introduce herself, her body of work before we deep dive into the questions. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really thrilled to be here. First of all, yeah, I uh, I'm Archana. I to talk a few a few words about my background i come from a very small village here in karnataka in india so uh, growing up there was you know my parents really dreamed about sending me to college you know which was not really uh, uh, what what you parents used to think about girl you know sending girl child to college so in a, growing up in a village where you know um, education open opportunities were minimal and you know thinking of a career that too for a girl was almost like a, you know impossible but my parents were you know they were they always thought out out of the box and i was the only girl child for them till uh, you know my brother uh, born very late so they were uh, looking through me uh, their future and you know they wanted me to stand up on my in you know on my own feet and uh, you know that's where uh, my parents really encouraged me to you know study hard from the very beginning and uh, so and they always believed in me in fact that's the only thing that keep that keeps pushing me even at the hardest moments even now i think yeah so then uh, i my journey towards the empowerment started you know when i was in 6th standard after i uh, passed or cleared a jawahar navodaya vidyalaya entrance test mm -hmm. after that i went to navodaya vidyalaya which is a version of a kendriya vidyalaya but it is uh, with the boarding uh, facilities and it uh, the different part of thing is you know it is completely free and you know it is a uh, kind of uh, you know 70% reserved for the kids from villages and you know it's basically targeted for talented kids from villages who couldn't get a uh, very good education and also almost no access to you know extracurricular activities or beat sports or something like that 
so i was exposed to all these uh, things when i joined uh, you know navodaya and that's like the first best thing that happened to me uh, that you know towards this empowerment and uh, so being in navodaya helped me in terms of uh, disciplining myself as a very young kid you know because the routines were strict and uh, and like we get to uh, explore everything starting from art to sport to you know education and it was like grooming oneself uh, you know uh, as a whole person so and after the, uh, you know my 10th standard i got an opportunity to sit for uh, dakshina entrance test and i fortunately cleared that and um, i got the dakshina uh, scholarship so which was uh, again a free scholarship where to uh, you know prepare kids for je mm-hmm. so uh, this was like you know the uh, second best thing that happened in my life so i i definitely don't know if if i could have gotten such quality education for je if uh, i would have been on my own so but um, dakshna helped me uh, to uh you know get very good je coaching and other than you know just providing the education they also helped me you know motivate and groom us along the way so mm-hmm. that was my 11th and 12th basically uh, i won't say it was easy it was definitely uh not easy and uh, to be honest you know in my case uh, i won't say that like i always liked math but except uh, it it was not just one aha moment but it was like my journey with math and science was up and down like you know till 10th i was like oh i always like math and science but as soon as i entered 11th you know things got very difficult that's when oh do i really like math now <laughs> that kind of a thing and then i rediscovered myself and started to love math and uh, yeah after uh, i finished my 12th up year for je and i got through iit kanpur and i graduated uh, uh, from iit kanpur in 2019 since then i've been working at microsoft as a software engineer beautiful beautiful uh, you know something that's common between all um, among all your stories is that a it's almost like a achievement resume based on failure resumes is everything that did not work for you that has brought you closer to where you want to be so i find that really fascinating and in all these stories especially as women ambition is what your family gives you first like whether be it in your case pooja or your brother in law said hey you know what i'm not a professor but i will figure this out for you or in your case archana where your family says hey you know i will encourage you to apply for things so it's beautiful to see how where you are is actually a series of failures and not a series of accomplishments and i think that's very very important for us to know because as there are younger kids who want to take up stem as their career it's it's what archana says right it's that aha of a dis discovery uh, right but sometimes that discovery can get you to success some some other times it's a series of failures that gets you to that uh, so it's really fascinating before we close on this i just want to do like a very quick round um, uh, you know on what is an advice you would give to your younger younger self very very short answers like two three line answers uh, before we close this and we continue the conversation for a larger recording the one advice i would give to my younger self is to be to go easy on yourself i think that especially i don't know if this is a gender or personality i definitely think women we are harder on ourselves and don't don't doubt yourself is what i would say to my younger self yeah i would say um speak up what i found is when you ask for help i've not come across a single person who will say no there are people all around you willing to support you uh, but it is important to ask and it took me a long time to get to that stage where i was comfortable asking uh, for help support um, so don't hesitate uh, on that front most people are supportive willing to uh, help but it's never happened that i picked up a phone and say you know can i have 10 minutes to discuss this Uh, and somebody has said no i i can't do that so so go ahead speak up ask for help there's a closed door push and not every closed door is locked if you don't ask the answer is no 
Always no, yes. Artana. Yeah, so in my case, uh, I don't have that lot of anger self uh, scenarios, but still. I am I... anger self right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but i would you know to myself at these moments you know i always tell to believe in myself so there are many times where i don't see an end for, you know for any given task uh you know at that moment i really start doubting myself but i should i you know i'm learning to believe in myself and to put myself through the uh whatever the task is but i you know i have always been able to come out of it glorify you know uh, in glory but only thing is in in the beginning it always uh, seems dis- difficult or impossible yeah beautiful thank you so much for sharing with that uh, we wrap up with this segment of the conversation thank you so much for giving your time to us um a longer version of this conversation will be available on the website and the link will be posted below thank you so much for joining in thank you thank, thank you asha thank you asha i hope you all enjoyed the conversation as much as i enjoyed talking to anjana pooja and archana as mentioned before a longer version of the recording will be available following the event at the jtf website i urge our viewers to check uh, check the recording at your leisure as they go in depth about some of their individual challenges and approaches our next session in the webinar is particularly exciting our younger viewers will get to, will get to meet two very inspiring women who will be introduced by jtf's very own priya patel priya is the wife of joy thomas and also sits on the board of the joy thomas foundation Priya is a business development executive at Thermo Fisher Scientific with an extensive experience in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. Priya, over to you. Uh, thank you, Vipasha. The Joy Thomas Foundation, as Vipasha had mentioned, was created in November of 2020 to honor the life and legacy of Joy. At JTF, we are building a global mentor network to inspire young students embark on their own stem journeys mentoring was always very near and dear to joy's heart he enjoyed spending hours with students and young colleagues discussing information theory and its real world applications often into the wee hours of the morning he himself had spent countless hours with dr thomas cover his phd guide and mentor during his stand for days and those discussions and those interactions had left such an indelible mark in his own life and he wanted to do the same for the next generation of young people uh in an effort to help them pursue stem education we especially would love to have women in stem you know both in the engineering the computer science and engineering fields especially with a panel full of itians as well as biotechnologists you know folks working in the drug development space uh join jtf as mentors to leave a lasting legacy by becoming role models for young girls somebody young girls can lean on in their stem pursuits with that said i'd like to um ask you to just um check out the jtf website for more information on how to become a mentor The inaugural Joy Thomas Prize recognizes the highest rank for a woman in the Joint Entrance Examination (JEE) advanced for 2021. The overarching goal of this recognition is for the prize winner to serve as a JTF ambassador and as an inspiration for school-age girl students in India to pursue STEM education. I'm absolutely delighted to award this award to the very this award the very first Joy Thomas prize for the top ranked woman student in the 2021 All India JEE to Kavya Chopra. Congratulations Kavya. Thank you so much.
And just to introduce... <laughs> Congratulations again. And just to introduce Kavya to those who don't know Kavya, Kavya is at the very beginning of what we believe will be a truly inspiring STEM career. As mentioned already, Kavya is not only the top ranked woman student in the 2021 All India JEE Advanced, but also the first woman to obtain a perfect score and All India rank one in the JEE main. She's presently pursuing a BTEC degree in computer science at IIT. JTF has also been following the achievements of another very accomplished young STEM scholar. I'm delighted to present to you all the IITM 2019 President's Gold Medal winner, Kavitha Gopal. Kavitha is the first woman to be honored with the President's Gold Medal in 60 years of IIT Madras history. She's also a world finalist at the ACM ICPC, which is considered the Olympics of programming competitions. Kavitha holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and is passionate about solving real world problems. Kavitha is presently a software engineer at Google. We believe that a conversation between the two of them would be deeply inspiring to both young students as well as seasoned STEM veterans. We cannot wait to hear your conversation. Over to you, Kavya and Kavita. Thank you, Priya, for the very kind introduction. And I'm really honored to be here and uh, like thrilled to be a part of this. So first of all, uh, Kavya, congratulations from all of us on your JE rank achievement. We are all very proud of you. Thank you so much. I would like to congratulate you for your amazing achievement and performance as well. Uh, Kavita has won the President's Gold Medal in 2019. So for those who don't know, this means that she secured the highest grade in her batch among boys and girls. Thank you, Kavya. Uh, for our younger listeners, uh, tell us a little bit about when and how you first got interested in science and mathematics in school. So with standard where you in, any camps and competitions that you participated in? So uh, in fifth grade, our school had these mathemat extra classes for mathematics that basically exposed students who were doing well academically to non-routine mathematical problem solving. So uh, those were something that particularly, you know, started my interest in mathematics because uh, they were something that were like very engaging, I believe. And the thing is that initially I used to struggle a lot with the problems that were given, but my mother's a maths teacher. So she used to help me out a lot, uh, you know, with the solving those problems. So uh, that was something that really helped, you know, kickstart my uh, interest in STEM in a way. And then it shifted a bit to computer science when in ninth grade, I discovered this video on machine learning where a team is using machine learning to, you know, help people who have chronic illnesses. So I just realized, you know, how transformative machine learning and technology really could be, right? You could change the world. You could make an entire group of people's lives better. So that was something that really pushed me towards CS. And I believe that, you know, uh, develop, uh, uh, participating in science and maths would be like a very good precursor because I believe STEM and CS are very uh, deeply, science, maths and CS are very deeply connected because there's a certain logical thinking process, right? So in 11th and 12th grade, I participated in a lot of Olympiads. I went for maths Olympiad, I went for chemistry, physics Olympiad, and I went for some of their camps as well. So uh, these were stuff that, you know, I found particularly interesting. And these were the things that pushed me towards a career in STEM. Uh, what about you? What ignited your interest in STEM? Uh, sure. Uh, so I was fortunate to be introduced to STEM at a very young age. And at school, my favorite subject was mathematics. So I used to participate in several math and science Olympiads during my school days, including Olympiads like Indian National Mathematics Olympiad. And as a student, I was always fascinated while reading about any science advances, right? So be it the discovery of DNA structure or the space missions carried out by ISRO. And then in my 11th standard, I began learning the foundations of computer science. And I would say there has been no looking back since then for me. And in college, 
I participated in many competitive programming contests and I think for me it was a very challenging and a very exciting experience when I actually represented India in the ACM ICPC World Finals. Also, what's most exciting for me is the interdisciplinary aspect involved. For instance, how artificial intelligence can be used in biotechnology and also as uh, we heard about socially responsible AI and uh, how we can harness the phenomena of quantum mechanics for computing, right? So yeah, for me, my interest in STEM fields began right from my school days. So tell me more about your school days. Who encouraged you to pursue science and mathematics in school? Parents, teachers, a public figure? So my parents have been a key source of inspiration for me. As I mentioned, in fifth grade, we had these classes for non-routine mathematical problem solving. So since there was something that was significantly harder than the normal syllabus we did at school, there was like a huge learning curve, right? So initially I used to just go to the lectures and I used to struggle with the problem sets and even struggle to understand what was going on in the lectures. But uh, my mom was a maths teacher, so I always turned to her for help. And she very patiently, kudos to her patience. I still appreciate that to this day. She was very patient with me. She helped me through everything, every single problem, every single concept. She was always there by my side to support me. So eventually I was able to do things on my own, but I credit my mother as the central figure that, you know, gave me that push that you can do it. You can, you, you can do something which you've always wanted to do, even if you were struggling with it initially. And my father's in CS2, so he has also always been like a great source of inspiration. He's told me stories about his career, about how he started CS. So both of them have been the key figure in pushing me towards a career and an education in STEM. That's awesome to hear. Uh, I also wanted to know, uh, for someone like me, you know, who's just entering college studies, what advice would you like to give me? Um, sure. So I think for me, college was a very exciting and a very memorable journey. So in college, I realized that there are just so many different paths that you can explore. So for instance, in my first year, I remember experimenting in a lot of different areas like robotics, machine learning, and so on. And also there was a lot of flexibility in figuring out my interests and the topics that I should deep dive into. So at times this might be a little rigorous. However, the experiences and the learnings that you get will be instrumental in shaping your interests even further. Needless to say, college is also a place where you meet really wonderful people. And a piece of advice for you would be that you should learn and explore as much as you can. And there will be a plethora of opportunities around you. So don't stress out if something does not go your way. Just focus on doing what you love doing and have a lot of fun learning and experimenting. So now that you have finished a few months of your first year, what has been your most exciting discoveries in IIT for you? So uh, recently in IIT, I got into college aid debating. So college aid debating has been really fun. The entire process of, you know, preparing a case and presenting your arguments in a logical and compelling manner, that is something that has really resonated with me. And currently, like, as you mentioned, I'm exploring various fields of tech as well. I'm exploring more about web development, machine learning, cryptography. So these are fields that in particular are really, uh, I'm really fascinated by. So, so far the college, hi or the highlight of college for me has been the freedom, the debating, and the tech. So uh, one more thing I wanted to know, uh, in IITM, surely, since the boys are in majority, you were one of the few people that were there in your batch, right? So what challenges did you face as a result of being in this minority? Uh, that's true. So in my first year, when I started taking classes in my department, I literally knew nobody there. There were much fewer women when compared to the number of men in my class. And a lot of times, be it in the classroom or be it in certain project groups, you may feel like you're the odd one out and you will constantly need to step out of your comfort zone. For instance, I was among the very few women who participated in competitive programming contests. Fortunately, I was surrounded by people who always encouraged me to pursue what I love doing. 
Also, note that there will always be other women who are also navigating similar challenges. So my biggest learning was that we should just uplift one another, confidently work towards our dreams, and know that anything is possible as long as you put in the effort. So let's talk maybe about your plans after college, right? So where do you see yourself after graduating from IIT? Any thoughts? So uh, right now, uh, as I said, I am exploring various fields of tech. So this has definitely told me that I want to pursue a career pertaining to one of these fields. But since I like a lot of them, it's kind of difficult for me right now to pick which one I should, uh, you know, go ahead and pursue a career. And so, but I definitely know for sure that STEM is the one field that I want to have an established career in for the majority of my life. So um, one question I had was that uh, if you could give uh, one piece of advice to a school student who's just starting to study science and mathematics, what advice would you give them? Right. My advice would be that you may encounter certain challenges while learning certain concepts and you might, you might encounter certain roadblocks, but do not get discouraged and do not give up the very first time that you encounter a roadblock or you find something difficult, right? So the most important thing would be to keep going and perseverance and persistence always pays off. So how about you, Kavya? What advice would you give a school student? So uh, as all of the, as a few of the panelists mentioned earlier, there was this pertaining theme about, you know, how women are inherently afraid to ask. So that was something that even I resonated with a lot because uh, even I felt like this intimidation, right? That you can't go up to people and ask them. It's just so scary. But the thing is, I feel that this one thing, if you're able to overcome that, you open yourself to a lot of perspectives, right? So even if people... You know, initially, even if some people tell you that, no, I can't help you, I feel you should you know, just be persistent, just keep on, go to people, ask them, someone or the other will help you, right? And it is, you know, when you learn more perspectives, when you learn more viewpoints, you learn more strategies, you are able to implement them better in your life, right? And I feel that that's something that uh, is integral for your growth as a person. So uh, I just uh, say that, you know, it was a pleasure to, you know, meet you, a pleasure to chat with you. And again, I hope that I can ask you for advice too in the future when I need it. I hope you'll reach, I hope I'm able to, you know, reach out to you and you'll respond. Uh, Kavya, I am equally delighted to get to know you and you're always welcome to reach out to me. And who knows, one day we may both be working together to solve some interesting problem in the world. I wish you the very best of everything, Kavya. Thank you so much. And I would be thrilled to solve problems with you. I wish you the very, very best of luck too. Uh, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Vipasha Ma'am. Fantastic conversation, Kavita and Kavya. It's so, so interesting to hear from the both of you. And I'm also quite curious to know what will happen five years down the line. You guys will come on a panel together. Who knows? Or you'll probably be talking about what you're working together on. Who knows? I mean, life is full of uncertainties and serendipities. So I hope a lot of serendipities happen to the both of you. Uh, with that, I would like to invite um, my co-hosts, uh, Preeti Varghese and Purnima Bala Subramaniam to conclude the event. With that, this is me, Vipasha Tilak, signing off. Preeti and Purnima, over to you. So congratulations, Kavya, on being the first JTF prize winner. Um, thank you to all our amazing panelists. Um, it was so great to see some of the same themes resonating from the most established um, um, uh, uh, STEM achievers to somebody who's just starting out uh, her career. Uh, thank you again. And thank you to Vipasha for being such a fantastic uh, MC. <clears throat> We want to thank the Pan IIT uh, Association for co-sponsoring this event and for their full support. We look forward to their partnership for this event and for mentoring future STEM achievers in the years to come. Pan IIT President Debashish played a crucial role in helping us plan this event. And to Professor Satya, the Director of IIT Tirupati, 
Thank you very much. You played a key role bringing JTF and Pan IIT together at the very beginning to formalize our collaboration. You've been passionate about shining the spotlight on women in STEM. You tirelessly worked to help us get the word out about this event to so many different communities from the IITs to Kendra Vidyales and other high school communities. A special shout out to the four Foundation for Excellence JTF women scholars who are in the audience today. Thank you for attending. Um, and to two amazing women at the foundation who make things happen every day. Asha Sundararajan, who's driving our high school STEM programs and recently helped, helped us launch a STEM lab for middle school and high school students. Maya Srinivasan, who has jumped in to help us pursue partnerships with the CSR and education teams at large corporate partners. Um, and this event would not have happened but for the folks who worked quietly behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Karthik, Anu, Bhavana, and Ashok, who, <clears throat> who figured out in record time how to run the Zoom webinar so smoothly. Nicole at Accelerhythm, who quickly turned around all the marketing material we needed. The JTF marketing team led by Vijay, who tirelessly stayed on top of all that needed to get done, got messages out to our partners, donors, volunteers, and JTF members. And uh, to Mani Ayer, Murli Subrao, Balaji Shyam Kumar, all batchmates of joy, as well as Kanan from Pan IIT, who put in so much work behind the scenes to make this event possible. On a personal note, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to get to know these amazing women STEM achievers, to hear their stories, and to be inspired by them. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to work beside my first year IIT roommate and friend, Purnima, in service of a truly wonderful cause. Thank you. Thank you, Preeti. I echo your sentiments entirely. It has been a delight talking to our panelists alongside you. Kavita mentioned meeting friends in college. Preeti and I go back 40 years. So yes, college friends are forever. Many, many thanks to Viprasha for guiding the session. And on behalf of JTF and Pan IITI, I would like to thank all of you viewers for attending this webinar. Many, many thanks to our wonderful panelists for giving us their valuable time and very inspiring advice. You know, a takeaway is that STEM career is challenging, but deeply rewarding. Hearing our panelists, um, you know, it, it uh, comes to me that uh, women in STEM, for them to seek further uh, STEM education opportunities and build support and mentor networks for themselves is very, very important. And we at JTF are more certain than ever that promoting STEM education goes hand in hand with these kinds of mentoring networks. And as Priya noted, um, JTF aims to build a global STEM mentor network. Mentoring is core to everything we do. We seek mentors at every next level for the next generation of STEM students and young professionals. We seek women STEM mentors and volunteers to join our team at JTF. Please help us grow, engage, and reach young women to pursue STEM fields. The world really needs them. Please register at the JTF website. We have a volunteer sign up with several options at various levels of mentoring engagement. The JTF mentor onboarding team will contact you. If you're associated with a company and seek interns, we invite you to tap into the JTF network and learn more about our mentees and JTF scholars. If your company offers corporate matches for donations, please keep us in your choices. We are happy to help you with addressing any corporate requirements. We need volunteers to help us with operations, marketing, and other areas in the US as well as in India. We invite you to donate your time and or money to help grow the next generation of STEM professionals. And finally, I would like to conclude by noting that the next exciting event from JTF will be in fall 2022. Uh, during the months of October and November, and we look forward to seeing all of you then. 
Thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you for our wonderful panelists. Thank you, viewers. Have a wonderful rest of this weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.